I feel pretty good. I feel happy. I think getting older is just so great actually. I thought, you know, when you're 20, you don't want to ever be 30. When you're 30, you want to be 30. I, I feel happy. So I feel like whenever um, I'm, you know, my mental health is challenged. It's not because of my own problems, but things that are surrounding me or situations with people that are happening that I don't think I'm personally causing necessarily. So I think as long as I can control how I react to things that are happening around me, which I've been able to do pretty well so far, um, it's good and it's been, it's been quite good actually. I've been open about it with mostly my friends and family and close friends, but I I didn't think that with the with my job with being like a, a public person or I guess that's how you call it whatever uh, I I thought it wouldn't be cool or I guess I I people made me think that it wasn't cool to ever show that you were a human that you have feelings that you have ups and downs, but um, so I've always uh, been super open about it, but not publicly. And I think after the pandemic, now brands are hiring talents like me to you know speak about it and to help other people sharing our my own you know our own experiences so i think it's um it's been great that there's more openness to it and uh i wish that it was like that years ago because it's been part of my life since i was very young so um but i'm happy that it is now so so yeah let's be grateful for it for those small changes that you know happen I had an eating disorder when I was, I think I've always had it. If you ask my mom, she'll be like, oh yeah, she's always had issues with food. And I don't know if it's every kid or just every girl. I just didn't like eating or I would eat too much. I just never felt like food was something normal or healthy. Like I always felt so triggered by the thought of food or even just looking at food. And I just never know how to, uh, I was a bit of an addict, like I would, I just didn't know how to pace myself with eating or not eating. It got to a point where it was really hard to manage. And so I think I was 17 and I told my aunt that I really needed help. And I didn't feel like telling my mom because I was, I don't know, too shy or just felt like she wouldn't understand. Or, and so I started going to therapy and it's been great. And I, 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 I can say that I think I got over the whole eating disorder thing when I was about 22, like in a way that I was okay having food around me, eating uh, you know in front of other people, and nothing was too triggering at that time. And I think having worked on it at a, such a young age really did help. Because these things are changing patterns that have been ingrained in us for so many years. If you ask me, I think it takes like at least five to seven years to really change something and make it like not your thing anymore. I had to learn that it was okay to eat sweets but not overeat them, you know. But I had a, such a hard time with it in the beginning, so I had to retrain my approach to it and, and my thoughts around food. I mean, it never really goes away, but there's a, there's a, it's not like there's a safe zone and an unsafe zone and you can be in the safe zone remembering that you were in a zone that wasn't so safe at some point but still be like okay i'm safe now it's okay nothing's really like you know it's like things come at you but if you're like if you've done the work they don't hit you the same way you know so i think i'm in a safe zone i spent many years hating it legit not understanding why i was a girl I felt like I needed to be born something different at some point. And it went on for a couple years and I was like, I don't really think I'm meant to be a girl. And then eventually it kind of went away and I'm, I'm happy that I am now. Like I feel like myself and my body. But um, I used to overstress about, you know, being skinnier or being fitter, whatever. And now to be honest with you, I'm happy. Like I know my, I know what I need to do to look like in a way that I like myself. It's again, it took years of understanding what my body needs, what I like, and what I what doesn't work for me. And uh, again, back to being 30. I think the best things come when you hit 30 because you understand so much more um, who you are, what works for you, and just like life in general. 
I basically didn't get my period for a while. I went to the doctor for it. I was living in Italy at that time and they didn't know what it was and they were like, oh, your daughter to my mom, she's gonna mature again. She's gonna get her period. And I'm like, I don't know, I, it didn't make sense. And um, so I, I just didn't know what it was and it, my periods were very, very painful. One time I almost fainted when I, when I was younger. I think I was like 15 or 16. But again, I didn't really, I never really questioned it. I was just like, okay, well, I guess that's how it is. And then I came to LA and I became friends with Jamie King, who's actually played a very important role in my life. Uh, and she, she's the reason why I'm, I was able to stay and work in the States. She helped me so much, but she sent me to her doctor, who, her gyno, who was like, you have endo. And I'm like, what is endo? So he told me all about it and uh, put me on birth control for it, which helped a lot. I started getting my period again and uh, I didn't have all the cramps that I would have before. But then eventually I developed cysts and I had to get surgery for it. And that's the only way to really see if you have endo because it's um, scar tissues that grow around your reproductive organs and you can only really see that um, uh, after surgery, right? After surgery, I felt so much better. I know that people say that surgery isn't the the ultimate answer to this prob problem, but it kind of was for me because the pain went away. I was only 23, 24 when I got surgery. So I think it made me grow up a lot. But I love it because when I was young, all I needed is to talk about how I felt, my anxiety, my depression, my eating disorder, and I would, talk, I would just legit like, uh, you know, be at my aunt's house every every time I could because she was the only one that a knew how to listen to these kind of things wouldn't get scared because people get scared people don't know when you like share your um, mental health problems people get really scared sometimes because they don't have the tools to welcome you know your your story or whatever or even know not only like know how to help but just listen you know it's very it can be triggering for some people and so she was just my angel and she saved my life legit I mean my therapist obviously did too but um, so I remember that every time someone like you know, tries to tell me their story. I'm like, yeah, I was that person once that needed to talk about it so desperately that even a stranger would be good. So I try to listen. I actually, uh, this influencer a couple years ago reached out and she asked me if she could talk on the phone. And I did, and we're not like super close, but I, I always thought that she was a great person. And so because of that, she started going to therapy and started doing EMDR, which I talk about a lot. And she's having it, I think she's feeling better. So it just made me so happy. I'm like, I just, I'm happy that I could, you know, in, in, even if in a small way, like help you through your process. I feel most at peace before I go to bed. I feel my body tense up when I know people are lying to me. Good people. Um, I think it's open. I think I have an open energy in my body, I guess, like uh, shows it. I'm not fully aware of it all the time. But people tell me that I do. All the time. <laughs> I hope, well, not all the time. Most of the time.